Hello everybody, it's Mr. Second Amendment, and today we're going to figure out what's in the box. Just picked up a new rifle. You can tell by the description, so let's just go ahead and check it out. First impressions on the Springfield Armory M1A loaded. All right, so in the box we have this soft case here, and this one again is the Springfield Armory, the Walnut 22-inch barrel uh, loaded. And we could see we got a chamber indicator actually years ago. That's the same type that uh, my first 1911 came with because I got it from Springfield. So they're still using the little small chamber indicators even on a rifle like this. Uh, we have a little rubber protective cap on the charging handle portion of the op rod. And of course we got our 10 round magazine. So let's go ahead and check it out. So real quick, before we get to the rifle, we're just checking out the case. I uh, got some cool mag pouches in here. Of course, you got your safety lock that none of us really use, but comes with it. The case isn't too bad. I know we're not here for the case, um, but at least to show you guys what's going on with it. You can properly secure the rifle. Looks like we got the muzzle end there in here or just use it for whatever you want. And let's check out what came with it. So in terms of the paperwork, we've got Springfield's manual for the M1A. This is going to be maintenance, taking it apart, safety warnings. It's kind of cool. They got the actual TM, the training manual for the M14. Some of this, uh, it's going to be good knowledge for you. Uh, if you want a little bit more technical information on it, this is for the actual M14 though. So you can see there are some of the full auto parts and things that are just not gonna apply here. Uh, we're actually gonna be doing this pretty soon, changing out the muzzle device. But um, this is kind of cool to have. And you got your warranty activation stuff. And it is good. They provide this with the slam fire. Definitely something to know about with M1 Garands, M1As, uh, depending on ammo and the primers you have. Um, but this is kind of cool. Some vintage information, it looks like from back in the day when they were doing the M1As were kind of the king of the Camp Perry national matches and things like that. So kind of cool. With the warranty, um, there might be, Springfield is always doing every now and then programs. Once you activate your warranty, they might have a gear up program where you can get free magazines. So I'm going to check that out. And then you've got your Springfield Armory sticker. Um, and let's just get to the real situation here. So starting at the front end, we've got the standard flash hider. It's a national match. And the reason for that is the hole, uh, the exit point is a little bit larger. So you don't have any strikes. The GI, USGI um, flash hider for this was a little bit smaller diameter. And it was really important to make sure you had alignment. Don't need to worry about it on a national, <laughs> national match flash hider. We do have the national match 0 0.062 width on this front sight. So it is a little bit thinner than a standard M14 front sight post, just for match purposes. I am going to be changing this out. Um, always wanted the bayonet lug. Springfield, I guess, once the 94 to 2004 ban started, um, they used to be doing the bayonet lug and they stopped. And after the ban lapsed in 2004, I guess they just kept selling them without the bayonet lug. To me, that's kind of an iconic look on the M14 pattern is the bayonet lug with the front sight on top. So I got this national match uh, flash hider from Fulton Armory with the bayonet lug. So we are going to be changing that out. But this is what we got for here. Uh, we do have a little bit oversized stock. And sorry, it's such a big rifle. So I think this is probably the best way to show it. But the stock is a little oversized um, compared to the actual GI stocks were a little bit slim lined. Uh, I guess they do this to add a little bit of weight for match purposes. So I'm testing the trigger between the M1A and my M1 Garand, which is well worn in. And I stoned that trigger uh, a little bit of creep. I don't know if it picked up on the camera on the uh, second stage of that M1A trigger. Hopefully it breaks in a little better with time. Looking at the weights, we're just about 10 pounds without a sling unloaded versus the M1. We got oil soaked in the stock with a leather 1907 sling, but 
it's pretty heavy. There's our national match, 308 marked, medium contour, 22 inch barrel. Uh, lubrication is actually really good. You could take it out of the box and just shoot it like this. Looking at the underside, no bayonet lug. We got the vent hole for the gas system. Um, the stock is beautiful. It's got a great wood grain. I love the color of it. It's just the perfect amount of uh, rich color. Um, you can see the fit and finish there on the butt plate. And you can kind of see why I don't like the oversized stocks. It just looks weird. Um, got that flip up butt plate for full auto fire was the intent. You can see the stripper clip, stripper clip guide on top. Again, there's an internal look. They greased it up pretty well, so you could take it out of the box and just shoot it. Okay, so another cool thing too is the tension is pretty good on the trigger guard. Those of you guys, for accuracy purposes, know you want that nice and tight. I know some national match dudes who will just leave their M1As or M1 Garands like that for storage, but that's that's a pretty good, pretty good tension, pretty good lockup. All right, guys, so overall, Pretty impressed with what I see so far. Uh, fit and finish, for the most part, does seem to be pretty nice. Uh, I am going to be changing out the flash hider, just like we talked about. Um, I also bought a olive drab cotton sling. Uh, for how much this rifle costs, and it doesn't come with the sling, some people are kind of a complaint about that. I'm not too worried about it because a lot of guys will just buy either a leather sling or do their own thing. Um, but either way, I think this should be a great shooting rifle, and we're going to try it out. Okay, so showcase the 10-rounder that this comes with. Um, honestly, the standard issue was 20 rounds, so that's all I'm really interested in running. So I did already get some 20-rounders, um, and that's really kind of where I think it should live. This 10-rounder, I'm just probably going to keep it in the factory case it came with. Uh, I might block it off if I choose to use the rifle for hunting someday. But this little 10 rounder, not as interested as the 20s. So definitely recommend get a sling. If you want the bayonet lug flash hider like me, do that. Um, and obviously we gotta get some 20s. All right, so I've just got a collection of uh, ammo ranging from really good to really uh, not good. But core locked, uh, 168 Match Kings. Uh, we actually got the 118 load here. Picked that up today. Got some PPU M80. You can see what I have here. This is the German men produced M80. So we're going from ball ammo to nice match ammo to a little bit of hunting mixed in. So I'm gonna do five shot groups with each of these loads and just kind of see what it does. You can also see the difference here in the rear aperture. So this is a pretty small pinhole versus, this is gonna be our standard M1 Garand M14 aperture, more for combat conditions. This is more for the match target range. I think I'm probably going to change that out. Um, and you can even get the national match rear sights that are hooded, which makes it even better for match. But I think I'm going to buy just a standard M1 Garand M14 rear aperture like this and just go ahead and switch it out. Um, great for the range, maybe not so great for quick target acquisition. All right, so like I said, first order of business for me putting the flash hider with the bayonet lug on and taking off the one that was supplied um, the set screw and the little castle nut were pretty loose so uh, I know the torque on this castle nut if you want to come in and check it out the torque on the castle nut is supposed to be 10 to 23 foot pounds and there's a little set screw right in front with one of these notches that holds it in place um, the set screw and the castle nut were pretty loose so I would definitely just check that. If you guys just picked up an M1A, definitely just make sure this is nice and snug. Um, I can't imagine that would have lasted too long, perhaps, under recoil. The set screw would have kept it, but there may have, maybe some rattle could have developed. So I'm glad we're doing this anyway, but just go ahead and check it. All right, so with this new Fulton Armory device going on, we're just gonna lubricate all of this. This is gonna be the last time we're seeing this. Might as well prevent some rust. Whack it with a hammer. So we're getting the existing front sight onto the Fulton Armory device. It is a little tight. Um, I can tell there may be some stoning or hand fitting required. Not that terrible of a job. In this case, I can actually convince it with the uh, man portable inertia device here. And I'm using a 
polished punch just to move it to its final place. We're just trying to get it relatively centered. I may go back a little bit, but we're just about there and then we can secure that screw in place. So now we're installing this. We're just gonna put the castle nut inside with the notches facing towards the, the very far end here. And just gonna slide this on. Try to get everything started. Don't rush it, don't go crazy with it, just kind of work with it. All right, so we're looking for 10 to 23 foot pounds on this. I have no way, I've got a torque wrench, but with this uh, spanner wrench here, I have no way to achieve that properly. So I'm just gonna go snug. Definitely a little tighter than it was before. And we want one of these notches to line up with the set screw hole just so we can secure it, make sure it's going to be good. All right, so off camera, we had to use a flashlight uh, just to look inside the hole to make sure we were lined up. So I'm pretty happy with the tightness on the castle nut. Now we should be able to drop this set screw all the way down into that notch and we're definitely there. You could feasibly blue Loctite this. Um, I'm just gonna go till snug and just kinda use it this way. But if you don't really have any intentions on changing this out, you probably could just use Loctite. Either way, this is gonna be pretty secure, both with the front side and the set screw. We got that nice and snug and we're just gonna leave it alone. Perfect. So with some assembly required, uh, just a couple little tiny mods, got an issue sling for it. Obviously the 20 rounders had to happen. Uh, the bayonet lug muzzle device, that was kind of necessary, at least for me, for two reasons. One, the M14, it's part of that iconic profile and look of this rifle. But also, I'm a graduate, Virginia Military Institute, class of 2011. We're the only senior military college or military academy in the country that actually fixes bayonets on parade. And the reason for that goes back to the lineage of the Battle of Newmarket, 1864. It's the only time in US history that an entire student body as a school fought in a pitched battle. So just being a VMI alum and loving the iconic look of the M14, I had to do the bayonet lug. But now, minus the national match front and rear sights, we have pretty close to a Vietnam era original issue M14. And this is exactly the M14 that we had at VMI, uh, minus the magazine, of course, for parade, but I'm pretty happy with it. This thing smells like linseed oil from that nice walnut stock. Now it's time to hit the range and we'll see how it does with that ammo. guys I'll use this as an opportunity to show actually using the stripper clip guide here so we have an empty magazine and if all you had was five round stripper clips you could put it in the guide all right so we just topped it off or got five rounds but that's how you can use the stripper clip guide Alright, so just a matter of weight comparisons here, just so you guys can see just the weight difference um, just between the ammunition itself. So I've got this with the M80 ball. This is PMC X-Tac 147 grain, 20 rounds of it, obviously in the steel magazine of the M1A. And we're clocking in at 1.94, 1 pound, 9.4 ounces. So that's just over a pound and a half for 20 rounds right there next up i've got it's actually a vietnam era 20 round colt magazine and we've got 20 rounds of 55 grain 556 loaded in here 
So this is the right magazine and the right ammunition that the M16, M16A1 back in Vietnam, this is what the guys were running. We're looking at 10.9 ounces compared to that 1, point, 1 pound 9 ounces. So definitely that's going to be a difference there in terms of having to carry that. Now I do have a metal 30 rounder, same thing, 55 grain. They did have 30s back then. They were kind of hard to come by. Some of the Lerps, uh, Rangers, and some of the Seals, they would, they would get their hands on these when they could. But these did, they were around. And we're at just over a pound. One pound, 0.4 ounces. And that's 30 rounds. So obviously less weight and size. We got 10 more rounds. And then just kind of checking out the modern with a Magpul windowed PMAG, 30 rounds of 55 grain, 1.08. So, or one pound, 0 0.8, 0 0.7 ounces. So 30 rounds for the AR or the M16 back in the day. Old school, new school, we're just over a pound. We are over a pound and a half on the M14 mags. And then again, for a vintage magazine with 55 grain, we're not even at a pound. We're just over half a pound. So last thing I'll say on that, not just the weight between carrying the two different types and kinds of ammo for these two weapon systems, but just the size and the bulk of the M14 magazine compared to these guys where you could sling a bandolier of these over your shoulder and have a bunch to carry for less weight cost and the size, let alone the weight between the M14 and the M16A1. So overall, checking the rifle out after shooting it for its first time, I did apply earlier off camera before I went shooting. I did more grease, a little bit of more oil on the inside. Just got a little bit of brass shavings. Um, from my past experience with M14s and M1As, this is gonna happen, so I am not worried. All the brass looks pretty good. A Little bit of brass on the bolt face. All of that is just fine. Did notice a little bit of the stock right here busted out. Um, could have been during an aggressive reload. I'm honestly not worried about that. Um, that might, might upset some people. Not really, I don't care. Um, I did notice at least the one good thing about shooting in that dark tunnel was at least I got to see the effect of this flash hider um, under low light almost nighttime conditions basically is what that was. Um, I should have filmed the front end of it, but I don't remember seeing any flash or any crazy muzzle flash. So it does seem that this flash hider under low light nighttime conditions um, kind of scenario, it actually did a pretty good job. Um, so I should have thought to film that, but at least that's the one good thing about shooting in dark tunnel conditions today. But overall, yeah, very happy with it. Recoil is very manageable. Um, and the rifle shot well, I just didn't shoot well with it. And before shooting, I checked the gas cylinder plug. It was nice and tight. I didn't have to do anything to it. Um, checking it now after shooting, nice and tight, nothing happened to it. Quite honestly, I'm just gonna leave it alone. Um, there's kind of no reason to routinely open that up and clean it unless you were for some reason shooting corrosive ammo but i'm just going to leave it <clears throat> but overall everything is still nice and tight everything's good to go um, i'm looking forward to getting it out in the daylight do some real shooting with it see what we can get so one thing i did have to do assuming i can trust my zero from today i did have to adjust windage pretty far to the left because uh, the rifle is shooting far to the right now, when I swapped the muzzle device, I did notice that Springfield did not have the front sight totally equalized uh, in the dovetail on the original part. I chose to just about center it here. It doesn't really matter. I can take up windage in the back, um, but it makes me think they zeroed it or at least sighted it in to some degree before it left Springfield because the front sight was kind of drifted to one side um, when I first got it. So doesn't really bother me if you're doing actual match stuff um, you are going to care about this you're going to want to set this centered and then move the front sight left or right as needed for me as long as we got a proper zero 
I don't really care that's a little to the left back here or a little to the right if that was the case, uh, but that is just something to be aware of. Pork arms. Right shoulder arms. Order arms. Just, just buy an AR-10. Jesus.